Okay. All right. Okay, uh, sorry everyone, we are back. Um, we've been having some te technical difficulties, um, but I think we got it going now. Um, so, uh, as I was saying, this is Best in Show. Um, this is a show of uh, art, uh, 50, 75 artists and their favorite pieces that they created in uh, 2022. Um, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna, I'm gonna introduce um, each piece in the show and um, I'm going to talk about for the pieces for the artists that aren't here. And then I'll have some artists that are going to be joining us to talk about their work. Okay, so um, the first uh, first thing I want to show you is, um, let's see, um, I wanted to, oh, hold on. I want to show you, here we go, okay. Uh, I'm going to share with you the Artsy screen. Uh, this is how you can access the show. It's artsy.net. Uh, look for Emerge Gallery NY, and you will land on um, this uh, homepage. Uh, right up front, we have Best in Show, Artist Personal Favorite from 2022. Um, if you click on this, you will uh, see the entire, um, the entire show. Uh, all of the works that's in the gallery. And then there's also work from additional 19 artists that um, are just on Artsy, not part of the show um, in the gallery. Uh, so the way that you have it here is all uh, alphabetically by last name. Uh, but the way that we're gonna look at it is the way that I curated it in the show um, at the gallery. Um, when I put this is one of my favorite things about uh, curating the shows is when I put the shows together, I put that first piece up and then let connections be known um, between them. Um, so this is the way that the uh, show looks in the gallery. You're working. Welcome to uh, follow along if you'd like. Um, just click on viewing room. Uh, so the first piece that we have is by uh, Josefa Gutilius. Oh, Josefa is an artist in uh, Saugerties, New York. Um, I've had a number of pieces of Josepha <coughs> called um, Sojourner Truth. Uh, Sojourner Truth was a African-American artist, uh, sculptress that um, lived for a period of time um, in Saugerties. So this is a bit of an homage to her. Um, okay, the next piece that we have is uh, by Annette Jarrett. Uh, Annette Jarrett is an artist living in Port U in New York. Bye. Bye. Uh, it's an artist living in Port U in New York. This piece is called Serenade. Uh, it's acrylic on canvas. Um, hold on one sec. I'm sorry. Uh, the next piece is uh, by Margaret Still. Uh, Margaret uh, is an artist here in Sovereignties as well who um, is uh, very inspired by uh, Edward Hopper. I'm going to see the Edward Hopper show on Wednesday, which I'm very excited about. Uh, Margaret, um, hold on, let me just see if Margaret has something to say about, uh, about this piece. Okay. All right, Margaret uh, has, a uh, number of works around the corner at Green. And then she also has a uh, good collection of work on the Emerge Gallery uh, artsy page. Margaret has been um, exhibiting with uh, Emerge Gallery for, for quite some time now. Um, so Margaret um, is, as I said, an artist in New Jersey. The strangeness and um, beauty of what happens ordinarily and the nobility and living presence of objects in space are what fascinates her as a painter. Her images are mostly based on memories of being on the road, photographs she has taken over the years and found images. When something grabs her, I play, she plays with it until it becomes something more um, pungent and iconic. So that is uh, Margaret Still. Uh, the next artist that we have is um, 
Nancy Deflon. And actually we have uh, Nancy here to uh, talk about her work. So I am going to uh, turn it over to Nancy and um, let's go. Uh, where do you want to go, Nancy? You want to go by the painting? Great, okay, excellent. Go right ahead. Yeah. All right, so we've got Nancy Deflon here. Uh, Nancy, tell us about this piece. Nancy is a wonderful photographer living in um, Saugerties. And was photographed in one of my favorite places to photograph. It's my go-to place when I want to get out of the house. I get into the car, I get my cameras, and I go up here to another place nearby. And that's Catterskill Falls. This is the, for those of you who don't live locally, this is the tallest two-tier waterfall in the United States, and sorry, not in, in New York State. And it was painted by everybody from Thomas Cole on up. So it's a very famous place. I've been there zillions of times and taken a lot of pictures. And, you know, they change, the pictures change with the seasons because they're different colors. And what got me about this is that actually a friend of mine had posted a photograph of the place and it had a little touch of orange. And I thought, right, I got into the car and I went up there. And by that time, it was rather a lot of orange. So I, I like this particular painting, the uh, sorry, photograph of Freudian slip there. Well, it's, it's it's got a lot of apparently qualities well, to it. Did, yeah. The nice thing about it was that I did not have to do much. I put a little softening filter on it to make it look a little bit painterly, to bring out you know the silky look of the water, and then the rest of it also has that soft look. Sometimes I like the rocks. I love photographing rocks. Yeah. And sometimes I like the, to bring out the rocks behind it and the textures there. And in fact, I have some pictures from this shoot that look like that. But uh, for this, I wanted that. I particularly wanted the vertical. So fantastic. Uh, Nancy's a uh, wonderful nature photographer, a uh, landscape photographer. You do a lot in, in Cape Cod. No, uh, no, 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 Rhode Island. Oh, right, Rhode Island. I'm sorry, I keep saying Cape Cod. Uh, in Rhode Island, yes. Uh, <laughs> uh, so cool. please have rocks because they're all in Rhode Island. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so please have a look. There's, there's. Uh, Nancy's been in many uh, Emerge Gallery shows before. So please have a look on the on um, the website for more of her work. Um, so really pleased to have another Catterskill. Uh, always a always a um, a plus here over at, in yeah. Hudson Valley. Okay, That's thanks, Nancy. Way. All right. Okay, everyone doing all right? Yeah. Right. <laughs> Again, thanks everybody for bearing with me. Um, I usually do have tef technical difficulties, but today was uh, a lot. Um, okay. Uh, so the next artist that we have is, um, oh, Anna Chinkunami, and I'm probably butchering um, Anna's last name. Uh, Anna is an artist um, living in uh, Red Hook, New York. Uh, this piece is called um, Tudaku. Uh, and um, hold on, let me pull up some info about Anna. Um, I normally have this information readily available, um, but since I had to start my computer over, um, I don't. Okay, so as I said, uh, Anna lives in Red Hook, New York. Um, her most recent work um, is a, a departure from the somewhat linear and square based abstracts of her past. This particular piece was a jumping off point for some new work and exciting work. She approached the painting process through a series of steps and the end result is a visual counterbalance of color, texture, and contrast. She finds herself setting boundaries and creating safe zones resulting in a work which conveys space or tension or a bit of both. Her most recent work is a departure from her sun, somewhat linear square abstracts, as I had, as I had just said. Uh, so that is Anna Sikonani. Oops. Uh, next artist that we have is uh, Stacy Bogdanoff. Uh, Stacy is an artist uh, living in, um, Kent, New York. Uh, this is a really beautiful piece. It's made of vintage le uh, linen, netting, uh, paper wire, and silk. Uh, hey, Robert? Yes. I'm sorry. For some reason, I'm not seeing the paintings. You're not? Okay. No. Uh, am I not? I'm so sorry. I'm glad you pointed that out. Maybe I'm not sharing the right screen. Are you just seeing me? Yeah. yeah. 
the gallery view. <laughs> yeah, we don't want that. <laughs> um, here we go. Better? Yeah. Okay, great. All right. I'm so sorry about that. Um, I am not in top form today. Um, I was totally thrown off balance. So again, pardon, pardon everything. Uh, so this is a really beautiful piece by um, Anna. As I said, it is um, some recycled uh, vintage um, fabrics. Uh, they came from uh, her aunt, I believe, uh, her uh, aunt's home. Uh, let me just find the story real quick and I'll tell you about that. Okay, uh, so it's called Split Level, as I was saying. And uh, split level began when she took apart the dining room curtains that had been hanging in her um, in her aunt's home who had passed. She loved the curtains and thought it would be able to use the fabric in her home, maybe as a bedspread or pillow. But when she was folding them for storage, the lining fell apart in her hands. Uh, the stitches were fragile and had no integrity at all. There was a fine musty dust puffing up as she tried folding them. And she lifted the lining from the curtains, opened the seams, and found over 70 years of dirt that had settled into the hem, the pleatings, the creases, and the folds. The dust and the dirt had become hardened and permanent, and her aunt's curtains had a new life. This is part of a series uh, using vintage uh, lining and curtains um, and fabrics that are overlooked or discarded in the garage. And this is by us, uh, Stacy Bobby. Uh, Bob Dunoff, I'm sorry. Okay. Um, next, we have, again, I'm sorry for all the back and forth on this. I usually have each of the pieces um, opened up, but as I said, I needed to restart my computer because of technical difficulties. Uh, so this is Pat Sinatra, and Pat is here. I did see Pat. Here you go. Oh, excellent. Wonderful. I'm gonna I'm gonna pin you uh, so that everybody can see you. And here's your piece. And uh, I love it. All yours, Pat. Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Um, I'm in the car on my way to an opening in Poughkeepsie, so bear with me. Um, this piece was painted in I think April of uh, 2022, and it reflects the ending of our COVID lockdown, you know? Um, and we're anticipating the light and springtime and getting out uh, and seeing people and doing things out of our homes. But the winter likes to linger on up by us. And um, my attraction is always toward where the sun is, uh, where the light is shining. And um, I noticed, uh, for about a month or two that the sun would come out just prior to setting. And um, you'd have a light show for maybe about a half hour at the most. And the light in my backyard, which this is a painting of, um, would shine at the base of the tree trunks or on the ground just before, you know, there's a, a, <sighs> a slight bill. Um, and that's what I captured. I, try to work um, a little bit more abstractly. And um, this piece spoke to me while doing it and it's my favorite of the year. I like it. This is very different than a lot of your work um, that, I, or that I know of. Um, I right. really like the etchings of the tree um, uh, in, in the work itself. It's, it's really beautiful, Pat, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Uh, Yes, uh, that is definitely one of the one of the best in shows. All right, uh, we are sorry again, folks. Here we go, Pat, and now we have um, Rahib, uh, Rahib Yas Yasser. I'm probably pronouncing the the um, Rahib's uh, name wrong. Um, are you here? I thought I saw you uh, earlier, but maybe. Um, Maybe you're not here. Um, okay, um, so uh, Rahib is an artist from uh, Egypt. And as I was saying, I was 
really, really surprised and really, really pleased to um, receive some uh, submissions from folks in uh, Egypt and Iraq. Um, there are a handful of artists, I believe there were four um, that are both from Egypt and or Iraq. Um, uh, this piece here is called Animosity. It's oil on canvas, 47 by, 30, by 39. Um, my works are strongly influenced by Baroque style paintings, specifically the usage of um, ch uh, chiaroscuro, the single-handed lighting blended with the philosophy of syncretism. The contemporary art movement, which is based on the continuity of aesthetic motifs taken from various cultures. These motifs are manifested in certain elements uh, sewn in the numerous art, art, artworks, cheating an imager, uh, creating an imagery of high contrast visually, aesthetically, and philosophically. Uh, so this is called um, animosity. Uh, we next have uh, Linda Ippolito. Linda, are you here? I'm sorry again that I keep going back and forth to all of this. Um, Linda Ippolito is an artist living in um, Montclair, New Jersey. Here we go, let's do it this way. Okay, uh, this piece is called, um, I'm so sorry everybody, I, I know I keep, keep apologizing. Um, I've known, uh, I, I knew Linda, we met through a, a, um, a, a artist friend and Linda does some really wonderful work with encaustic, even though this is an encaustic, it has, does have a real encaustic feel to it. It's oil, it's collage, and then there's some resin on top. They're all on individual um, cradles and then paneled together. It's 28 by 22. It's called Between the Lines. Uh, the work created on a panel allowed me to build images using multiple processes. The use of collage and oil pigment sticks allowed the layers to converse with each other, layering the light with a resin coat. Uh, her vision here is an interpretation of nature and how one feels when immersed in it. This project transformed over a bit of time. It changed three times to settle on the right conversation of the grids. And I had visited her through a couple of the inclinations. Um, I enjoy the exchange between my paints and fibers. Um, and I, I have to say that seeing it in early stages and then seeing it in its complete stage is really stunning. Uh, it's very beautiful, Linda. Okay, so that's Linda Ippolito. Uh, next, we have uh, Susan Angelis. This is called Second Bloom. And Susan, I know you're here. Yeah, I'm here. Let's, uh, hold on. Oh, you don't want to see that. Let me bring, bring you up. Uh, okay, that's it. Um, the reason I picked this one as my one of my favorites is because it's a great metaphor for my art making process okay. and my life in general, yeah. which is I go through this um, intuitive exploration and I open myself to surprises. This particular piece is a whole nother painting underneath another painting. Um, it was okay on its own, but I wasn't in love with it. So I, I, I kept looking at it and then I kept working on it. And this is what I finally settled on. It's an entirely different from the previous one, but I think my process, uh, because of acrylic being um, transparent somewhat, I think it lends itself to layers and there you can see the complexity and the richness and the depth, um, which is kind of a metaphor for my life experiences all in coming out in one painting. And this particular one, I, um, I used to work in oils and charcoals, but now I do mostly mixed media. This is acrylic with um, fabric uh, embedded in it, particularly um, cheesecloth. And I've also glued in some crushed glass to create that um, speckled effect. That's pretty much it. Susan, you usually, you usually work with multimedia, different- um, Yes, I do, yes. Yeah. Yeah, uh, this, um, the texture that's created on this is really gorgeous. Mm -hmm. Thank you Thanks. so much. Good to see you again. Thank you for, for being part of the show. Thank you. All right. Uh, Susan's been in a couple shows at Emerge Gallery, so you, you'll be able to see uh, a few of her works. Oh, you don't want to see this. Hold on. <clears throat> Thank you.
this is really throwing me off. I'm so sorry, everybody. Um, Great job, oh, thanks. <laughs> By the way, we have Christmas or holiday in the village um, going on right now, too. So that's that's a little bit of a distraction as well. Um, OK. A lot of activity going on here in Saugerties today. Oh, great. Here we go. OK, uh, so we are back on track. Um, we just had Susan and now we are moving on to Leslie Rolnick. Uh, Leslie is an artist who lives in um, Connecticut. Um, this is called Floral Burst. It's oil and um, oil stick from RNF. Uh, Floral Burst is a continuation of exploring the use of oils and oil stick on paper. It requires her to pay attention to the way the surface of the paper impacts how she uses both the medium and the painting tools. She wasn't sure whether she would incorporate collages as she's done in the past when using paper. Uh, she just had a loose idea at the beginning that she wanted to convey a floral motif without referencing anything. Uh, Robert, Robert, yeah. you're not sharing the screen. I'm sorry, oh, I'm not on the screen, okay. You're not seeing the screen. We're not seeing the painting, no. You're not seeing the painting, okay. Better, no? Still, no, okay. No. Okay, guys, I'm sorry. You're still seeing me on YouTube, right? I have the wrong screen open. Oh my gosh, this is hard. There you go. Oh, that, you're just seeing a blank screen now. Yeah, no, we're seeing your your favorite your apps. My apps. Got I think it. you have to click on the on top. So yeah. Yeah. On the left, top left. There you go. Now you're in the artsy page, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. Here we go. Okay. <sighs> <laughs> okay. Back on track again. Uh, it is a virtue. Okay. So uh, we finished with Leslie Romick. Okay. Now, let me get out of here. Uh, I can't right now, Judith, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, so the next artist is, um, we have um, David Holt. Okay, David Holt is an artist over in New Paltz. Uh, this piece is called uh, Halloween. And you're, st you're seeing it now, right? The artwork? Most of it. Mm -hmm. Most okay. Okay. If you scroll up, we'll see you. Yeah. There you go. There you Perfect. go. Okay, great. Okay. Uh, and David, you're not here, right? No, I didn't think so. Okay. Uh, so David Holt is an artist living in uh, New Paltz. Uh, this is called Halloween. Um, the uh, medium is uh, acrylic. It's 11 by 14. It's part of a series of paintings of a desert landscape. Uh, the work was about the feelings of the holidays. Okay. Next we have David Holt. Now we have Rosemary Chase. Rosemary, are you here? Yeah, I'm right here. Hi. Here. Okay, great. Let me uh, let me pull you up. Okay, fantastic. Okay. And let me find Rosemary. We are okay. Good to see you earlier. Uh oh, I uh, did, did you enjoy the festival? Uh the holiday in the village? It was uh, yes. Thanks. Good, good, good. Okay. Okay. Um, so this is a piece that honors American pioneers and their pioneering spirit. And to me, quilts um, go hand in hand with the American pioneer. Now, uh, a lot of my work starts with something that I found. In this case, I found a stack of Vogue magazines. But often I work in layers and I really feel like a follower, not the leader of the piece. Um, the piece has a life and uh, it tells me what to 
to do. So it tells me in steps. So the first step was pick up those magazines. <laughs> the second step was putting them in colors. And I have a, I, I was, used to be a clothing designer. So I, it wasn't a far stretch for me to start seeing something related to fabric. And uh, I want to stop here now because now I know I'm going to be creating a quilt, but I want to stop here because I, I'm a big believer in um, actions, you know, are, are first come from the thoughts that are in your mind. And I had been thinking before even starting this project, thinking about um, how hope is essential. It's as essential as drinking water. Um, and also about feeling nostalgic about um, American pride. God bless America, keep America beautiful, the American flag. And those thoughts had been running in my mind. So I found it a very magical and organic process to wind up feeling this quilt and, uh, you know, seeing this as a quilt and, and then knowing I had to design a quilt and seeing these one inch flowers that were a must. And I got very detailed about it. And then bringing in the horse because it was the horse who, who was the one that led, that brought the pioneers to their dreams. So I, I just found it like a wonderful unfolding of the concept um, in a natural way. And, and, and I, I just, like I said, I just worked in steps. The next thing, you know, just, I just kept asking what it needed next, what happens next. And it took me two months to execute it. Um, when you work this way, sometimes it does. And I'm very happy with it. I, I feel that it would work in a commercial space as well as a private home. And uh, it is uh, Vogue magazines. It is Prismacolor pencils, um, uh, metallic acrylic, um, acrylic paints. And uh, I often also work with shadows and why you can see through the horse. <laughs> it is, so, I mean, I really like the transparency of it. And it's the, uh, the photograph really doesn't do it justice because on the bottom, there's a uh, really wonderful uh, glitter to it, almost like a diamond. Yeah, yeah that you yeah, can Yeah, I have some glitter dust in there in the dirt. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's really wonderful. Um, it's it it you know people have really commented on it. It's 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 one of the uh, one of the favorites in the show. Thank you. I I just wanted it to um, bring delight. I wanted it to say delightful, and that was the goal. And I think from the opening of the show, I was happy to get that response. So it sure does. Thank you. <laughs> Thank right. you very much. Thank you so much, Rosemary. Good to see you earlier today. Thank you. Uh, next we have Paolo Barry. Uh, my. Paula, are you, uh, I saw you earlier. Are you still here? Let me bring your work up. Yes, I am. Okay, wonderful. Uh, I haven't had a chance to speak with you, but congratulations, the work sold. Oh, thank you. Well, yeah, good I, news. I think I, I will miss him because it was my favorite, so I'm going to miss him. Oh, yes. <laughs> um, let, me, uh, let me find you here. Oh, here we go, wonderful. Um, thanks for joining us. Uh, so uh, this piece is called Imagine. Uh, Paola lives in Poughkeepsie. Uh, so please tell us tell us about this piece. Um, it Again, it's another piece that really needs to be seen in person. Um, Thank but, you, Robin. Thank you very much. It's actually, it's, uh, I'm sorry, uh, I'm, I have a little bit of cold, so I really apologize. Uh, it's, a, it's called Imagine because uh, in a certain way, it's a little motionless, but at the same time, the color are inspiring something that, for me, I still think that we can imagine something good for the for for the world that we for the planet that we live in, and so it was it was really based on a good feeling. It's a porcelain painting piece because I, that's why I love painting on porcelain. The colors are extremely bright in porcelain. I don't think there is a comparison in any other medium for the brightness that you can obtain on porcelain. It's a very old, old medium. Uh, I come from the old continent, so that's why I learned to paint on porcelain. And I love this interpretation uh, that goes from my old fashioned grandmother dishes to this new wave of painting on porcelain and because more modern, more stylish, that is actually, uh, I think very, I, I love doing it actually. 
end. And I'm glad that it was at the show because it was the first time I actually saw it emerge. So I'm, I'm, I was very excited about it. Well, we're, I'm really pleased to break the good news to you today, too. Um, Thank you. It's really a really beautiful piece. Uh, I hope that, you know, I get the opportunity to exhibit more of your work. Thanks. Thank Thanks. you to everybody. Thank you. And we'll see you soon. Okay. Definitely. All right. Next, um, I have Dominic Santis. Uh, uh, Dominic. Hello. Thank you. Uh, let me find your work. Um, and again, this isn't the best way to do it. Um, I think you're on page three. Here you are. All right. Um, welcome, Dominic. Dominic is an artist living in uh, Beacon, and um, I've had a number of pieces um, of Dominic's in shows. Always a pleasure to um, have Dominic's work here. I especially like this piece. Um, and I really like the way it works with the pieces that um, are around in the gallery. Um, so welcome, Dominic. Good to see you again. Thank you for having me. Um, this was actually just, it was a part of a series, um, and it was just me experimenting and it always just stuck with me for, throughout the rest of the year. So when you had the open call, um, this one kind of popped to the top constantly. Um, you know, it was, it was a little different for the, for the year. So, um, it, it, it was on the spot, reportage, you know, plain air, I, you know, done very quickly. Um, different from what you've had in the show so far. Yeah, it is. Uh, but there's a real playfulness to it. Um, I, I, what kind of bird is it, by the way? Uh, it it's a gray cat bird. Oh, it is a gray capper. That is the, uh, the name of a real bird. Oh, I didn't realize that. Okay. I, it was, it was b before COVID. I had no idea. I sat outside a lot and I saw these gray birds constantly. And um, last year I painted them. Or this year, earlier. That's this fine. Year. Excellent. Uh, well, do, there, there, there's a number of pieces of Dominic's on uh, Artsy as well. So please have a look at uh, uh, some of Dominic's other work. Uh, most of you are watercolor. Um, uh, yes. And all different sizes. Um, great. Thanks, Dominic. Hope to Thank see you, you soon. Thank you for having me. Yes. All right. Thanks so much. Thank you. All right. Next, we have uh, uh, Veronica Lawler. Uh, Veronica is a uh, artist living in Jackson Heights in New York. I've had a number of uh, Veronica's works in in shows before, including some. Uh, uh, some of her smaller works on paper show of, of her works there. And I'm going to be doing a show of Veronica's in uh, over the summer um, about her new series. Um, we did a, um, a, a, a residency at Birdcliff uh, recently um, exploring the um, brickyards in the area um, and then abstracted those. But this is from a different series. So um, Veronica, tell us about these and uh, welcome, welcome. Uh, always always a pleasure to see you. Um, hi, hi, Robert. Thanks yeah. for having me. Um, yeah, so this, um, I wanted to send this piece to you for Best in Show. Uh, this is, uh, as Robert mentioned, I'm, I'm kind of obsessed with industrial sites. <laughs> and um, this is a painting that was part of a series that I started um, when they uh, demolished the old Kosciuszko Bridge that connects Brooklyn and Queens in New York. It's this big old steel truss bridge. And I just was really, you know, fascinated by this, this icon coming down and the way it came down. And um, so this particular painting, I was, I was really happy with the movement that, that I was able to, to show in this painting. This is called Demolition, sort of the point where <clears throat> these big steel pieces come down when they're when they're being sort of um, broken apart by the by the construction crews and um, <clears throat> excuse me so I, I wanted to just sort of create that feeling of tumbling and and you know this sort of gravity defying act <laughs> that these massive pieces um, go through as as a as a something like a bridge that's been standing for 80 years comes apart and is demolished um, and there's just something very poetic about it. It's to me, it's a real metaphor to to go to these see these kinds of big industrial um, 
objects or places that uh, you know are so much a part of, of our city and our world and the building of the world we're in today. And now they're just sort of falling apart and they're they're being demolished and nature's taking over. And I don't know, I just find the whole thing very romantic. <laughs> and so this painting, I, I really, it's acrylic, it's 30 by 40. Um, and I, I was able to bring in some linear elements as well, which, which is something I've been exploring lately, uh, mixing that with the shapes in my paintings. And, um, you know, I just was really, I was really happy with the way this one came together. And so uh, I sent it in for the open call and thanks Robert for accepting it. And also it's really sweet that you hung it next to Dominic's because we've been friends for so long and it was just kind of fun. <laughs> I actually think that in it, so. so I like the way that worked out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like the way that worked out. Um, yeah. it, it is really beautiful, Veronica. And if you, uh, there's there's a number of other pieces from the series um, uh, with the Kosciuszko, with the deconstruction of the Kosciuszko. <laughs> on, on Artsy, it's under the uh, small works. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you'll be definitely seeing a lot more of Veronica over at Emerge um, in the uh, coming months. So Thanks, Robert. Always Excited pleasure. to be working with you. Uh, okay. Looking forward to our starting this up, our visit in January. Okay. All right. Me too. <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, next, I have uh, Terry Treesner. Uh, Terry, are you here? I don't think you are. No. Okay. Uh, Terry is um, an artist living in uh, Freehold, New York. All right, guys, um, I really, uh, I haven't apologized in a few minutes, so let me apologize um, <laughs> again for um, just the mess that this whole thing has turned out to be today. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, so this is Terry Briesner. Uh, it's called Brilliant Morning, Cro uh, Morning Crossing the Bay. Uh, this is a uh, pastel. Uh, it's 12 by 6. I'm sorry, it's oil. It's 12 by 16. And the work was inspired by the brilliant morning light dancing off the water crossing the Bay Bridge um, in Virginia. So that's Terry Priestner, um, Brilliant Morning at Bay Crossing. Uh, Killian Gole, or Killian, are you here? Okay, Killian is an artist living here in. Uh, I am here. Oh, you are here. Oh, great. Good. Let me. Hi. Um, let me. Let me pull you up. Let me find you. Oh, here you are. Great. Excellent. Uh, welcome, Killian. Good to see you. Hi, it's Kellen. Hi, thanks Kellen, for having I'm me. Sorry, Kellen. Hello. Okay. Uh, if you have it, I've no, I, I have a tendency to butcher people's names too. So, okay, Kellen. Um, I thought I saw an eye there. So, welcome. Uh, tell us about Pinkberry. Sure. So, um, oh, this Pinkberry. is. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, I live here in Socrates, and uh, in my backyard, we're growing some pokeweed plants. Um, and they have this berry that makes this beautiful pink ink that you can see in my painting. Um, it was really meaningful for me to be able to make my own medium and then use it in my paintings um, and to feel connected to the Hudson Valley uh, through my artwork. Um, and I uh, like to explore movement and color in my work. And I, I prefer to have my paintings breathe by leaving uh, the white space open between colors and shapes. Um, cool. Thank you for having me, Robert. Absolutely. Uh, what What is the application? I mean, do you use a brush? I use a brush. Um, uh, it's watercolor and the pokeberry ink. Um, yes, I use a brush on paper. Great. All right, wonderful. Uh, thank you so much. Hopefully we'll we'll be seeing some more of you here. The first time. Absolutely. Thank you, yes. Got it. We'll see you soon. Thanks, Helen. All right, next, um, I have a piece by Chuck Dorr. Uh, I don't think Chuck is here. This is called Gravity of Marriage. Uh, Chuck has a, uh, a, a pretty good sense of humor. Uh, this is mixed media collage and pencil. It's 14 by 14. Uh, and um, Chuck lives in Brooklyn. Uh, this is his favorite piece uh, from the year as it came to him without threat. One thing led to another and voila, the piece fell into place. 
the colors, the textures, and the images were just asking to blend in randomly. Uh, much different than the torture and angst he can bring to mo most surfaces. The subject is marriage, the delicate balance till death do us part. He works with collage, watercolor, and colored pencil on paper. Uh, so that's Chuck Dorr. Uh, Debbie Auer Breitbart. Are, Debbie, are you here? Don't think so. Okay. Let me, um, let's bring Debbie's piece up. Uh, this is a fun piece. Uh, this is called uh, the Diner Midnight Snack at the Area 51 Diner. Uh, Debbie is an artist here in Socrates. I just want to double check. You're, you're, st you're still seeing the art, right? <laughs> Are we back on track? Okay. Yep. Good. All right. Uh, so Debbie, as I said, is an artist in uh, Saugerties. Um, this is acrylic spray paint and airbrush. Somebody is... Uh, somebody's... Uh, Trying to, I gotta. All right. Uh, if, you, if you are unmuted, please, please mute yourself because I'm getting a bunch of us. Okay, great. All right. Uh, so uh, she, Debbie, usually works in acrylic um, and watercolor, but she's been experimenting with airbrush and spray paint. This piece is a combination of spray dust, airbrush, uh, spray paint, and acrylic. It's a fun portrayal of 1950s inspired alien server who is cheekily serving up some galactic grub from the Earth menu. It's a lot of fun to work on and combine the different mediums, and it remains one of her favorites that she's worked on this year. Uh, so this is Debbie, um, out, uh, Debbie Breitbart Hour. I'm so sorry. Uh, Debbie Hour Breithoff. Um, midnight Snack at the Area 51 Diner. Uh, next, we have a piece by Ellen Crimmins. This is Prayers for Ukraine, and I think Ellen is here. <sighs> Maybe not. No, okay. Um, Ellen is not here, uh, so I will tell you about this piece. Uh, Ellen is an artist living in Salt Point, New York. I'm not too sure where that is, but I think it's pretty close. Oh, it's near Millbrook. Oh, it's near Millbrook. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so this is called Prayers for Ukraine. It's a uh, waxed watercolor. I haven't really seen much waxed watercolor before, but Ellen, um, she had a piece in the last show, um, introduced me to it um, uh, a little more closely. Um, and it's really beautiful. Um, so this painting represents solidarity uh, with Ukraine. It is not a full sunflower um, because the war is not finished and the Ukrainian people are still struggling. The background is dark to represent emptiness and horror of the war. Uh, this is a wax watercolor painted on Arki's uh, hot, uh, hot press paper, stretch over galaxy, uh, uh, gallery wrapped canvas and waxed. By stretching the paper over canvas, she's able to paint and wax with, without worrying that the paper will be damaged. She likes to frame her own work rather than mounting on cradle board, which is usually the way that wax watercolors um, are presented. Uh, so that is Ellen Crimmins. Uh, next, we have a piece by, um, oh geez, hold on. Hold on, technical difficulties again. What's going on, man, how are you? Yeah, happy holidays. Are you enjoying all the, the, uh, the everything that's going on? Absolutely. Good, good. Okay. Oh, great. Okay, wonderful. Um, all right. Uh, so sorry again. So we are on, let me share my screen. Okay, great. Uh, and we did Ellen. Oh, Eileen, here we go. Hi. Power, uh, wonderful. Uh, I love this piece. Um, thank you so much. It's really good to see you. Uh, this is called um, Ascension. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so please. Okay, um, first of all, thank you for including me in such a beautiful show. Uh, and I 
<clears throat> I've enjoyed listening to the other artists' comments because I think we all share this you know, this part of the work is intentional, part of it is serendipitous, part of it is going over other things. In this particular case, um, so I've been doing more traditional uh, printmaking and plein air painting, and then the pandemic hit. And in the beginning, you know, not even art stores were open. So I started using um, stuff that was around the house and found myself taking old canvases, painting over them, um, uh, and then, uh, you know, doing things like melting beeswax candles uh, in a pan on my kitchen stove and painting with that. I mean, you've seen some of the other pieces. I call it my pandemic work. This doesn't have wax, but it's a piece of cardboard mounted onto a, a piece of a canvas that's been painted black, mounted onto aluminum. So how's that for using um, materials? And um, it started in a very um, unusual way. I was using a piece of cardboard to protect the, the table that I was working on. And then I began to sort of see uh, some of the patterns and then I just put it aside, came back to it and started adding uh, acrylic paint, graphite, um, Caran d'Ache crayons, um, colored pencils. And I don't know, um, I have some uh, apple ladder sculptures out in the world. And I call my sculpture series Stairway to Heaven because the ladder uh, to me um, uh, speaks to me about um, uh, striving for enlightenment. And, um, and I just decided uh, that that this piece, that the piece was done like a year ago. And then all of a sudden, uh, what was the last piece? I just said, oh yeah. And that's why I called it Ascension. It's about uh, this uh, condition of being human, which is messy, which is the background of this piece. And then, you know, the apple ladder symbol of in, in the context of being human, uh, striving for spiritual enlightenment. It's a long piece. It's, I think, 33 inches long, 16 wide. But again, that was just based on, you know, materials at hand. And I, why did I submit it for best in show? Because people coming through my studio uh, kept on saying, gee, I like that one. I was unsure about it. Um, but people kept on pointing to it and saying, man, I really like that one. So I don't know. I thought I'd take a chance. <laughs> That's really interesting you say that because I, I know from, you know, uh, heard from a few artists that it's, you know, it's it's really difficult for them to choose what their, their favorite is from the year. It's like asking them to choose their favorite child. Yeah. Uh, so uh, I'm really glad that people were up to the challenge. Uh, uh, Eileen, this is, this is a really beautiful piece. I have it right next to the desk. I look at it all the time. Um, and that the yellow in those uh, the ladder and the um, and the lines are just just stunning. Thank you, thanks Robert for including uh, me. Thank, thank you. you. It's good to see you. I hope you're doing okay. I will indeed. I'll come up to the gallery next. Please, yes, it would be great to see you. Thank you. Thank you. I know. All right. Uh, next we have um, Katarina Spitzer. Uh, hold on. Okay. I keep doing this wrong. Now listen, nor I gotta I gotta apologize. Normally I have each of these windows open um so that I can just flip right to the next one. Um but it just as I was starting my uh the internet went wonky, everything froze up and I needed to restart the computer so I lost all of my open windows. Uh so I'm trying to do it in the less aggressive, least aggressive ways possible. <laughs> okay, so this is Katarina Spitzer. This is called All Roads Lead Home. Katarina is from um, Valatai, New York. This is uh, oil on linen. It's 30 by 24. Uh, the roads we choose in life, no matter how practical or conventional, eventually touch on the path our soul has chosen if we remain open to change. Early in life, I sought convention through a formal education in the sciences with vocational forays into pharmaceuticals, academia, and information technology. 
Although interesting, I realized that what I wanted to convey to our world, I could only do by using the language of art. Born the youngest of nine children to immigrant parents that migrated to Athens, New York after World War II, um, I began my pursuit of the art in the early 70s, painting watercolors at the dining room table for the enjoyment of her mother, who was um, in her, who, uh, who was in her later stages of life. Um, so this is Katerina Spitzer. Uh, next piece we have is J.D. Weiss. Uh, this is called Untethered. Uh, J.D. is a, a wonderful photographer um, living here in um, Woodstock. J.D. uses traditional two and a quarter um, film photography and then um, scans it into the computer um, and does a little work on it there. Okay, next we have Robin Adler. Robin, <laughs> <laughs> thank you for being so patient. Yes. I'm happy to be here. Thank Excellent. You for, uh, you sure. You want to sit here? You want to go by your piece? Um, I'll be by my final piece. Not okay. That. Well, oh, we can't hear Robert. Somehow you knock the audio off when you move the laptop. Okay, thanks. Thank Hi, you. All. Nice to see all you. All right, this is Robin. Thanks for including me in the show. Um, this is my piece here, um, very colorful. I, I, um, I uh, was painting during the pandemic. This is part of a series. I had three pieces. One piece was in the last show called Holding Time. And then there's another piece um, that's also in the series that was called brewing and they were all really my internal states kind of my stages of the of the pandemic my internal world during the pandemic so the brewing was the one i that came first which was sort of like something's i don't know what's going on this is a feeling i've never had before but it sort of represented you know what was what was happening in my inner world and then um holding time was kind of that referring to the the um elusiveness the elusive nature of the pandemic where you know it felt like it had been forever but then it felt like it just happened and and so that's what that piece was about and this one is my best in show because i feel like it's the more hopeful one so reconcile could feel like a, a word that is not hopeful to people but for me this reconcile was colorful and spirited and um and um you know there's a lot of movement but there's also stillness and so this is acrylic on wood um i often paint with acrylic on on wood or on canvas but i really like the way um i feel like wood can make acrylic paint sing sometimes so i feel like um i really i really was able to come to well, I, I reconciled where I was um, <laughs> at, you know, um, at the stage of the pandemic. So thank you very Excellent. much. Thank you, Robert. I yeah, always time. Always really a pleasure. Uh, yeah, Robin's had a, a number of pieces and shows before. Um, actually just sold, sent two pieces out last month, right? Yeah. Uh, two of her pieces from some other shows, um, uh, including the last show. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. Hi, Edward. We're running a little a little behind. Yeah. OK, great. OK, uh, so that's uh, Robin Adler. Always great to see you. Great to see you, too, Robert. All right. Next, we have uh, this is a piece by Jeanette Cahill. This is called Ro uh, Rolif Jansen Kill. Uh, it's oil on canvas and it's eight by ten. Um, next, we have a piece by uh, this is Rita Sherry. Rita Sherry is an artist living in, where do you live, Rita? Woodstock, I believe. Um, yeah. And this is called uh, The Elder. It's a paper lithograph. It's 11 by 13. Uh, I missed this. I'm, oh, Peter, I skipped right over you. I'm so sorry. We have Peter Sheehan. I got to go back. Hold on, Peter. Missed you. 
We didn't know. Where are you at? Oh, I could get through a few. I'm so sorry, everybody. A bunch of them. Okay, here we are. Peter Sheen. Uh, this is called Nightmare. And Peter, you're still here, right? Or did I lose you? Here you are. Okay, great. Um, I do. You are on mute. So if you could just unmute. And then um, let's talk about uh, Nightmare. There you go. You got it. There should be a little mute button there. On the, uh, it's usually on the bottom. You'll see a little microphone, picture of a little microphone. And there's probably a red, red cross going through it. Okay. okay. All right. Wonderful. Excellent. Okay. You can hear me. I can. Yes. Okay. Good to see you. So tell Good us. Good to about see you. Okay. This is this is a large piece, uh, forty by sixty on Archer's watercolor paper. Uh, I'm a painter, and I'm an in total into into total abstraction. Um, I deal with color. I was once told I was uh, colorblind once, and that charged me up. And I deal with nothing but color. I'm a right now. I'm a farmer, and I take all my inspiration from what I see outdoors. I take it in the colors, the greens, the yellows, the blues. I take it in, and then I let it come out in paint. I'm an artist who deals mostly in paint, and I let the paint work for me on the canvas or on the paper. This happens to be Archer's watercolor paper. 300 pound press. And as, as I said, it's 40 by 60 acrylic with ink, wash, and then covered again with another coat of acrylic. Can you hear me, Robert? Mm -hmm. Hello? I can hear you. Yes. Yep. Okay. Yeah. It's a really, the colors is a, it's a really nice balance that you have in, in the piece. Um, now this 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 one this this particular piece was not the the, the piece I submitted to best in the show, uh, and I I realize that right now I'm going to it's right behind it's right me. behind you. This is it. <laughs> this is the piece. Uh, so I'm going to have to make that change. I don't know how that happened. Uh, my apologies, Peter. Well, it's okay. Uh, you showed two of my work. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but nightmare is available. Uh, that one is available as well. All right, great. Thank you so much, Peter, for joining us. Okay, take care, Robert. Thank you. Okay. Uh, next, I have a piece by uh, Tad Richards. Tad is a uh, digital artist uh, living and working in um, Kingston, New York. Um, and this is called Welcome to Blondies. And I'm assuming Blondies is the dynamic. Uh, Tad Richards, um, Jacqueline Oster. Uh, Jacqueline is a wonderful watercolor photographer. She has a whole, uh, I'm sorry, watercolor painter. She has a whole series of uh, vintage um, uh, works. And this one, the road of the phone, which is called Law Office, is um, in the show, if I can find it and bring it up. Here we go. Okay, this is called a uh, vintage series. It's called Law Office. It's nine by 12. Okay, um, next I have a piece by um, Kathleen Heron. Uh, Kathleen is an artist uh, living in Orange, New Jersey. Uh, this is a smaller piece. It's called Father. It's um, 11 by nine and it's all recycled wood. It's recycled wood with uh, pen and crayon. Uh, the next piece that we have is by Sandra Taylor. Uh, I'm sorry, Samantha Taylor. Uh, this is called Elephant Circus. Uh, Samantha, are you here? Yes, I am. You are wonderful. Thanks for hanging in there. Excuse me, I'm uh, in a spot, but ladies are being very kind. Let me find you now. 
Yeah. So oh, here you are. I see you. Wonderful. Um, how was today for you? Amazing. Thank you. Excellent. I bought the Newbury store and um, the artisan market. So uh, I'm really excited to be uh, talking about my art for social and environmental action, uh, which is primarily what my art is all about. And this painting and my work is inspired by an impressionable time that I grew up in uh, Kenya, East Africa. Um, so my portfolio is to advocate for the urgency of uh, wildlife, environmental and social justice issues, including climate change. Mm. So this particular piece, Elephant Circus, which is watercolor on painting, features playful elephants. And you know, there's only about 500,000 elephants remaining. And they're very much threatened by the fight for food and land and water and the human connection. Um, not so much ivory trading anymore, but there because of climate change. So this piece represents playful elephants trumpeting to each other in circles in the form of a circus in search of their favorite waterhole, which is on the, the bottom right hand corner, and also their bathing area. And the matriarch elephant is in the middle, who is the father of the family and who is herding them to make sure that they reach their final destination and the place for food and water and away from any potential uh, threats to their survival. So the elephant is a mascot for signifying strength and optimism and a sense of community that we can all learn from um, in our world today as we face many, many challenging issues and the fact that the elephant represents loyalty to the family the community and how we must all work together to restore communities for our future generations. It's a beautiful series, Samantha. Um, I've seen some of the other pieces um, that you have, and it's it, it really is a, a wonderful that um, you know to have to have a, a, a art with a message. Um, I think is, is, is really important. It's a show that I've been thinking about doing myself here at the gallery too. I think that just knowing, knowing um, you know, what it, uh, a, a message behind a piece of art is, it just makes it even, you know, even more special. Well, uh, thank, so you. Thank, thank you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank and for the show. Thank you for um, letting me participate. Thank you. Absolutely. You got it. I'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Uh, the next piece is by Stacy Pritchard. Uh, Stacy is an artist living in um, Atlantic Highlands or New Jersey. I'm, I'm not sure where in New Jersey. Uh, this is called uh, Waffle Cone. Uh, it's an oil on wood and it's 36 by 36. Uh, it's an iteration from a sarcastically nostalgic exp exploration of the contradictions of coming of age in the 70s to early 90s in the US. And then Stacy quotes a uh, some lyrics by Bowie. I I can remember standing by the wall and the gun shot above our heads as we kissed and we kissed as though nothing could fall, and the shame was on the other side. That's uh, from David Bowie, 1977. Stacy Pritchard. Uh, our next artist is Raiden Frost. Uh, this is called Beneath the Surface. Uh, Raiden is a really wonderful abstract artist. Uh, this is acrylic on canvas. It's 20 by 20. Okay, next is um, Stevan Genis. Uh, this is another abstract piece, Orbit. Um, this is a bit of a, um, this is acrylic. It's on Masonite um, and it's uh, 20 by 19. Emily Haig. Emily is an artist uh, living in Montague, New Jersey. This is called Glowing Fields. Um, it is uh, made of uh, acrylic. It's got some mediums and it's on, uh, it's all on wood. Okay. Eric Burns. Eric, are you here? Yeah, hi. You are. Excellent. Good. Uh, wonderful. Um, Eric, thank you again for, for joining us. It was great to meet you the other night uh, at the opening. Um, Eric has a piece called Seasonal Spiral. 
Um, Eric, tell us about now. Most of your uh, most of your work is all um, calendar based, correct? Yeah, that's right. Okay, great. So tell us how uh, a little bit about this piece too. Uh, this piece is just a seasonal calendar. So here you see the blue and the red. The red is changing to the blue throughout the uh, fall. So if you start on the, uh, the fall equinox, be all red, and then you just flip one card from red to blue every day, and you can see how far through the season you are. And then when it's all blue, you've reached the solstice. Nice. Excellent. And then I, I, you know, I also say that it's also, uh, you know, you can, you can make it a, uh, you know, visually aesthetic piece as well, a very interactive uh, piece. Um, so I, the way I had set it up, um, I sort of set it up in the same spiral that you have, uh, but I switched it around a little bit where one of the colors, you know, it starts with the brown and then one color is entered into each of the solid um, so that, you know, I, I really like the idea of interactive art. Um, and you can also hang it in different ways. Each piece is, into, is, is um, you know, hung individually. Um, yeah, definitely what you make of it. Yeah, yeah. I, we, I had exhibited a piece of Eric's um, uh, maybe a year or two ago, another calendar piece that was, a, um, you know, an interactive piece as well that people really responded to. Some will end up taking home. Uh, so I'm hoping that they're having a lot of fun with it. Uh, but yeah, this this is a lot of fun, and I had a lot of fun setting it up too. Um, right. uh, Eric, thank you so much for for joining us. Uh, good to meet you, and uh, you know I hope to see you again. I would love to put some some more of your work in shows. That's wonderful. Thanks. We'll see you soon. All right. Take care now. Bye bye. Yeah. All right. Um, our our next artist is um, Aaliyah Ibrahim. Um, I don't know if you're here. And I'm probably pronouncing uh, the name wrong. Um, Aliyah is um, an artist in Egypt. Uh, let me see if I have something here to tell you. This is just a stunning piece. Um, you know, one of the reasons why uh, some of the work from the artists that had um, submitted work uh, internationally um, aren't here in the gallery is because it, you know some of them are large and it would be a fortune to ship over. Um, but I wanted to um, include them in some way because they're, they're really, really stunning, including um, this one, which is called uh, Beautifully Packed. It's oil on canvas, it's 40 by 30. Uh, knowing that a woman wants, um, knowing what she needs to be in her finest state, perfect beauty and elegant for the um, beauty costs much. Even if it suffocates her, she was always beautifully packed. Uh, so I'm really, really pleased, and I was, I was again, I'm so surprised. Um, I don't know if any, if 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 you're all watching, but I, um, you know, the the, uh, the artists for, who had submitted, but you know, I'm very, very honored that um, my gallery has made it out there in the world, literally. Uh, Geraldine Popko, Geraldine, are you here? This is called uh, Sunshine on a Winter's Day. Really, really beautiful piece. Um, and actually during the show, there was just uh, a customer who came in to talk about this piece and just was just stunned by how, how, how beautiful it is. Geraldine, I don't think you're here. Uh, Geraldine lives in Woodstock. Uh, and then I have right in front of it, I have exhibited a piece by uh, Jean Newberg. Um, Jean is an artist over in Woodstock. This is called Feminino. I'm really pleased to have a piece of Jean's in here. Um, haven't really exhibited her work before. Um, I've been wanting to, so um, I'm really pleased to be able to do it now. And I'll just show you. I just think that the two of them match so perfectly, uh, went together so nice, as if she's sort of sitting in front of a, a beautiful sun <laughs> Again, that's one of my favorite parts of, of doing this is by uh, combining all of the work, you know, making those connections. Uh, we got Jean, Marjorie, Marjorie Magid, um, or Magid. No, I think it's Magid. Yeah. Uh, Magid, right? It is, yeah. This is called The Meeting. Uh, Marjorie, her, her work is so whimsical. I, I, every time I see it, and I see this every time I mention her work, but it's true. I mean, it brings a smile to my face. Uh, there's so much joy in all of her work, and I'm really pleased to have this one here called The Meeting. Next artist is um, Barbara Spaziri. Uh, this is Through the Garden Gate. 
Uh, Barbara is an artist living uh, here in Socrates, and this is a uh, watercolor. It's uh, nine by 12. Okay, Linda Linton, I know, Linda, I know you're here. Um, how's everything up in your area? Well, uh, there's no snow yet. <laughs> We're good. waiting for the snow, but no snow. <laughs> Excellent, very good. Uh, Linda is an artist that, um, you know, lived in Woodstock for many, many years and just recently relocated up north a little bit further. Um, so Linda, it's always a pleasure to have you here. Uh, I miss seeing you in person and, you know, our, our meetings and whatnot. Um, but I'm happy to see you here virtually. Uh, oh, so right. Good to be here. Yeah. yeah. Well, this, um, the thing that struck me, when I, my first house in Woodstock had a garden that was completely overrun and there was an old azalea bush and the color in the spring used to be so vibrant and so stunning, I had to paint it. And this is a painting it's taken me years to do. Don't ask me why. I think I just wanted to get that energy that was in the bush and um, in, in those flowers and in the color. In, in the color. Um, and I finished it back in January. This And it's, it's a favorite for sure. It brings back a lot of good memories. And I always just remember that bush because the whole garden was a mess. And suddenly in the spring, there was all this bright red, bright magenta color bursting out. So that's the story behind this. And um, yeah, I finally got the energy, the sense that this was how the bush seemed to me. Sometimes I guess it needs a little time, no? It's funny, isn't it? It is funny it's how really, that, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. I think it, I think the way it was worth it. Oh, yeah, <laughs> thank you. Thanks a lot. <laughs> uh, there's, I, I hopefully, of, hopefully, I'll see you soon. Yeah. Yes, I hope so. Yes. Yeah. Um, I whether it's here or there, um, I have a lot of Linda's work on Artsy, including a um, solo show calling uh, called "The Story of a River," uh, and it's 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 Linda spent a year traveling uh, the the uh, Sawkill River. Um, exploring different areas, painting them. Um, so you could see a, a whole collection of probably about 36 paintings from that series on Artsy. Yeah. Thanks, Linda. Uh, thank you. See you soon. Yeah. Okay. Um, this is a beautiful piece, a uh, beautiful landscape, Roliff Jansen Kill. Uh, this is called, this is by uh, Jeanette Cahill. Uh, Jeanette is an artist living in um, West Shokan. Read to Sherry, I did. We got uh, Linda Schultz. This is a really beautiful piece, Grassy Field, a uh, smaller piece. Um, it's nine by 12. And um, Linda lives in Woodstock as well. Uh, this is a, um, I, at first I thought it was a photograph um, when I uh, when I first saw it, but it's not, it's a stone lithograph. It's called um, Time and Distance. It's by Amy Silbercleet. Amy, Silbercleet. Um, Amy is an artist in Gilbao, New York, or Gilboa. I'm a Jersey boy, so I'm pronouncing all these wrong. Okay. Uh, really pleased to have this piece. This is, um, there was no, they were nosing in on me. I was terrified by Dale Wofield. Um, I know Dale is mostly a sculptor uh, or a pottery maker. So I was really pleased to have this pencil piece um, come in by Dale. And Dale lives in Port Ewan, um, New York. We have another portrait. This is by Vicki Morgan. This is called Catharsis. Um, and it is, uh, Charcoal, the size is 23 and a half by, what was it? 23 and a half by 17 and a half. Okay, and now um, we, uh, I have Agnes here. Agnes, are you here? Here you are. Okay, you're, uh, you're on mute. 
Okay. <laughs> okay, great. And I have I have some good news for you, Agnes. Again, uh, really? while, while we were doing this show, this piece just sold. Yes. Oh my goodness! <laughs> so Congratulations. So I just sent a little piece of Agnes's to Belgium uh, a couple weeks ago uh, through Artsy. So this one actually was bought by someone locally. Okay, wonderful. <laughs> Nice yeah. surprise, and I hope you're feeling well. And wish everybody happy holidays, whatever you're celebrating. And a shout out to Linda Linton in Vermont. <laughs> and one other thing I wanted to say about Tad Richards is painting that Blondie. I know where it is in Kingston, and it's actually a cute little um, restaurant and a trolley car. Nice. You really have to go check it out. It's amazing. So this house here is just up the road from me. It's in acrylics. And um, I drive past it on and off to visit another artist friend. And it caught my eye one day. And uh, I just decided to paint it. It looked lonely to me. <laughs> you know, it was sitting there with the grass growing and the flowers coming up. And so I says, I'm going to paint it. I actually painted it a few years ago, but never finished it. So I finished it this year. And then I looked at it. I said, it kind of looks lonely. It needs some cats. <laughs> what house is a house without some cats? But um, I didn't, I named it in French just to make it sound a little better <laughs> than if I wrote cat house. <laughs> so I put Maison de Shah and I love animals and little by little, I like to stick a little animal in here and there in some of my paintings just to give it some intrigue and, you know, and it's a little whimsy and it's a little out of my realm again, but this is the second time I went out of my realm and uh, it worked out. So uh, I'm very grateful. So I thank you and don't apologize so much because you're doing a wonderful job. Uh, yeah, thank you. Technology has its own mind. We all know that. It sometimes <laughs> don't want to listen. And you do a good job. You work hard for all of us. You get us out there. And uh, we just sit back and enjoy creating. So thank you uh, for that. Thank you very I much. I so appreciate that. Thank you, Agnes. I really do. Thank especially you. Uh, today's been a challenge, uh, but it's all good. Uh, I just want to say about this painting, I can I can always tell the cat lovers because they make mention of the two cats. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, yep. it's the thing that I noticed too. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a cat person. All right, I thank you so much. Ag anymore. I don't have any anymore. I used to have cats, and they, you know, just okay. we go away now a lot, so it's kind of hard to have them. But I do love. I love all animals. Yeah. I do. I'm an animal yeah, lover. Uh, especially with your animal pieces. There's, there's yes, my paintings, my portraits. Yep. All right, great. Congratulations again. Thank you so much. What a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, uh, next, we have a visitor here at the gallery. Uh, really pleased to see. Um, well, actually, well, hold on. Hold on. Yeah, well, hold on. Um, we've got um, Ian Borchet. Yeah, I'm here. Here. Yes, I'm sorry. It's okay, um, no worries. Here we go. I'm really pleased to have, this is beautiful. Um, I, I, and it's watercolor too, which I really, you know, I haven't really yeah. done many watercolors before. Um, I've done, uh, exhibited a number of um, Vian's pieces in, um, in different shows. Um, so this is, this is a little different for her. Um, so please tell us, tell us about, uh, about this. Why is it your favorite too? And about the um, watercolor, I'm really curious. Well, well, actually, I've been teaching watercolor. Uh, I'm a visual artist. I do pretty much all mediums, but I, I mainly work um, acrylic on canvas. Um, but I also teach uh, watercolor painting for adults for over a decade. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I think the watercolor medium is very um, fun. I think of it as fun. And it's, it has its own thing. So it's very different than, let's say, oil and acrylic. It's very fresh, very translucent. It, it gives you a very light feeling, which you don't get in oil and acrylic. That's one of the many reasons I like watercolor. Um, it has this very light, airy, um, and you basically work with the white of the paper. So kind of, and I think a lot of people find it difficult or tricky. Um, I've heard that a lot, uh, but I personally think it's just a wonderful medium. It's water-based and it's pretty easy to clean up and you work on paper, so <laughs> there are a lot of advantages to it. Um, nevertheless, I mean, the theme here is, so I did a series actually, not only this one, a bunch of them, um, same same subject matter, all depicting basically my walks in the park and basically the light coming through the trees 
and um, just kind of the feeling um, that um, being in the park and being surrounded by nature and uh, feeling um, relaxed. So going for a walk and trying to get relaxed and trying to feel good. Um, and it, it usually does the job, right? Um, so that's basically kind of the aspect, kind of meditation um, and just going for a walk and trying to, you know, um, make, uh, if something is bothering you, let it go. <laughs> and all that stuff, refreshing your mind, refresh your mind, refresh your soul, refresh your spirit and energy and physique as well. So yeah, it, there's many as there are many aspects to it. Um, this does have a real refreshing quality to it. I mean, when you when you say that, I mean it does. It seems like it's it's just a like a, a, a just a washover of just um, you know. I just feel like I'm being you know just cleansed with it almost. Good. <laughs> you know? I'm happy. I'm happy to hear that. I know it, so I did the job. <laughs> it's got a landscape feel, but it's got a very yeah. you know, it's got a lot of motion like water, uh, you know, like a cleansing or rejuvenating feel to it. Uh, yeah. It's it's really beautiful. Uh, thank you so much, and You're again, welcome. you, you, know, you um, please come have a look at some of Ian's other work at uh, on Artsy. Um, you will be disappointed if you like this. You'll definitely like the others as well. Good to see you again. Thank, thank you. you. You too. Take care. Bye. All right. Bye bye. Okay, uh, next, um, next is Arabella. Okay, so uh, I have um, a, a guest here uh, in the studio or at the gallery, Arabella Colton. So uh, Arabella, you wanna um, go by your piece or you wanna, okay, oh, you're there. Oh, great, okay. Um, Arabella, um, Arabella Colton lives here in Saugerties, um, and this is um, her piece. Uh, Arabella is a, a photographer. So tell us a little bit about um, the story behind this. Yes. This is a bit in the making. Yes, um, I love trees so much, and tree stumps break my heart. This was one of three trees, beautiful, huge, beautiful big trees, right near where I live, and I would walk by and and see the stumps and I always thought it was very beautiful the patterns in the stump but I thought the tree was dead it had been killed and then I came by one day and there was a leaf appearing out of it and it was so thrilling such a miracle life coming out of what I thought was dead Reemerging, life reemerging, life always finds a way. Mm -hmm. It does. And wasn't there, there was a bit of a controversy about the removal of oh, those trees, that right? Was, yeah. That was a different tree. Oh, that was different. Okay. Yes. Okay. These were three trees. Well, I was going to say, if it, if it were the same tree, then it would, and there, there, there definitely be some significance there. Yes. No, you these know, were, these talk were. Talk about resilience. Yeah. Yes. Uh, wonderful. And then Arabelle also has a collection of photographs that she took in the 1990s in San Francisco called the Wall Dog Series. And there was a, uh, well, an unknown artist that was going around San Francisco painting uh, dogs on walls, um, almost like a Banksy kind of. Yes, answer. yes. Um, and in the 90s, it was, uh, you know, people really took it upon themselves to explore the city and try to find these murals, uh, including Arabella. Mm -hmm. So there's a whole collection of uh, her photographs from there on, mm -hmm. on Artsy. The wall dogs of right. San Francisco. And two of them are being shipped to Oregon yes. this week. Yep. Yes, yay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks Arabella, good to have you here. All right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. Hi Beth. All right. Um, Thank you, Arabella. This is really gorgeous. Um, Mutanhara Saleh, uh, the Hours of Oris. Um, I don't know if I'm pronouncing the name correctly. Uh, again, apologies um, if I'm not. Um, this is a this is a uh, cut paper piece, and um, Muter lives in um, Iraq. It's a smaller piece. Um, let me see if I have something. Um, about this, but it's, it's, I believe it's, um, it's an S, okay, so sorry, folks. Um, I really wanted to see this in person, too. I need to uh, 
start bringing some of these in. It is paper. It's only nine and a half by six. And it's the Egyptian symbol. And it's been made from paper sculpture. It's book folding. Uh, it took about 15 hours of work uh, through an entire month for him to create this. So this is called uh, The Eyes of Horus. Uh, Will Nixon, thanks for hanging in there, man. Uh, it's, uh, I'm going to bring you up. Uh, I was really pleased to have this. Um, this is called For Chloe. It's acrylic on paper. Um, Will is a wonderful poet and um, pretty good artist, it turns out. Uh, <laughs> and photographer. Um, uh, as I said, Will's a wonderful poet and uh, he's he's taken part in uh, my the art and poetry show that I do every year. Um, so uh, please have a look on, on uh, Artsy. You'll see some more of uh, Will's work, but I will shut up and let Will talk. Take it away, Will. Well, I was uh, experimenting with trying to create uh, stick figures, uh, various stick figures. And so that's part of what this is. Uh, and then stars, I got riffing on stars. Um, painting is new to me. You may know Ellen McKay, uh she's she's been teaching me art so this yeah, was wonderful she's got a yeah. great process uh yeah yeah for inspiring yeah. folks yeah so that's where it comes from excellent do you have a poem for it uh not yet no, come but... on. At least a high <laughs> maybe that'll be my challenge thanks okay, good <laughs> you got it man good to see you you too all right see you soon okay uh uh, so that's for Chloe. Um, next, we have a uh, oh, beautiful piece by Natalie Baberka. This is called Estuary. Um, it's a larger piece or a longer piece. Um, it is uh, 48 by 24. It's acrylic paint. There's some ink. There's some uh, gold leaf on there. And I don't think Natalie's with us. No. Okay. All right. The next uh, piece in the show. This is beautiful, Fatma Gamal. Um, and this one, again, I would really like to see in person. This is called Crows. Um, it is a, uh, it's it's not that large. I mean, it's a, it's 35 by 26. Um, it is uh, charcoal on wood. Really, really stunning piece. And uh, Fatma lives in Egypt. Uh, Maureen Lowen Bremer, this is called Tapestry. It is a photograph. Um, and I don't know if it's a, a, it's a digital photograph. I don't think it is a specific place, but uh, Maureen does live in Stone Ridge. Okay, uh, Dorothea, Dorothea Marcus is next. Where are you, Dorothea? Hold on, let me bring you up. Why don't I have it pulled up here? Okay. Give me a sec. I'm sorry. <clears throat> and you can always do a search too. <laughs> they make it easy. And there's quite a few of Dorothea's works um, available on Artsy as well. Here we go. This is the uh, piece that's currently in the show. It is a collage called Tree. And let me find you. Here you are. Well, I saw you. Okay. Yep, I'm here. Oh, wonderful. Great. Okay. Hi, everybody. Hi, um, yeah, good to see you. Yeah, thank you. It's, um, you know, I feel like I'm watching the World Cup of Art with all these people from different countries. <laughs> um, it's really great. Um, it's so exciting with the internet that you can get work from people all over the world. Isn't that amazing? Um, yeah. I, yeah. I'm really, really pleased and yeah, thrilled with the whole thing. Yeah. And this collage, it's one of the few things that I've actually, that I made by myself at home. Um, I live near the Woodstock School of Art and, you know, they have a great printmaking studio and wonderful classes. And um, I'm kind of very busy with lots of things in my life. And so generally when I go to a class, there's like three or four hours where I have my phone turned off and I can focus on creating art. And I don't have a practice, you know, I've never had a disciplined practice of doing anything myself at home. 
Um, but several months ago, a few friends of mine encouraged me to try it. And I just kind of set a timer for a couple of hours. And, and these actually, many of these, the pieces in this collage are from, this is the first year um, that I've studied printmaking. I've taken several different printmaking classes at the Woodstock School of Art. And so these are, um, I took prints that, you know, I wasn't totally crazy about or, you know, wasn't planning to use or frame and I cut them up. And one of the things I like about the printmaking is I can get these beautiful colors with the ink. Um, and then the, the thing that I decided to call it tree because it kind of looked like a tree, this white, white piece in the middle is just kind of a textured paper. Um, but um, it's very interesting. I was at the Art Society of Kingston earlier today um, to see the December show of the Abstract Eye. And I found it interesting that one of the artists who had done a couple of collages, she referred to them as analog paper collages. And I've never seen anyone describe a collage as analog. Um, and all my collages are analog. Um, I've never done, I don't mess around with digital. I, I do photography, which is digital, but I don't mess around with digital art. And so I guess you could call this an analog collage. Um, I'm also a big fan of the work of David Hornung, who's an artist who recently moved to Woodstock and who teaches collage. Um, and he's represented at the Elena Zang Gallery. And he does these paintings and collages that are very whimsical and have this kind of innocent, almost childhood book illustration feeling to them. And so this one kind of reminded me of the spirit of his work. So that's it. Beautiful. I like the idea of you doing digital. Digital. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, something else I have to do. Okay. Beautiful. That's really nice, Dorothy. I like this one a lot. Um, I would have thought that this this would have been my favorite too. Um, I've seen it over the years, uh, you know, from over the year. Uh, but this this is definitely a, a one that stands out. Oh, thanks thank so much, Dorothy. Good to see you. Yes, thank you. All right. Um, uh, Christine, uh, Shelly Davis. Okay, uh, this is called uh, Magic Mushroom Motel. Uh, Shelly has been working on a, um, a series of uh, antique and vintage signs. Uh, so this is her latest. It's acrylic on canvas and I believe it's 11 by 14. <clears throat> this is a piece by uh, Christine Graff. Uh, Christine is an artist living in um, New York City. This is called Hard Soft Circle Rectangle Where Opposites Meet. It's mixed media, it's lace, rusted metal, and dyed fabric. It's uh, 12 by nine and the, the uh, width is, uh, or the uh, dimensions is, is, is one inch. Uh, Christine works with all recycled materials. Uh, this, this piece has been a favorite in the show too. Everyone has really been commenting on this that it just, it's completely blissful. Um, and it is called bliss. Uh, it's oil on wood panel. It's by uh, Lauren Rosenblum. Uh, Lauren lives in um, New Jersey. She lives in Marlboro, New Jersey. And uh, this is just when she was at the pool one day, saw uh, this scenario and just, just felt the bliss and decided to paint it. Uh, this is another favorite. This is by Meredith Morabito. Uh, this is a sculpture, it's untitled. Um, it is of uh, ceramic and it's, a, it's inspired by um, a gentleman who wound up losing his life savings trying to win um, a prize on the at a carnival, um, and he wound up winning um, this this big banana with the dreadlocks. Um, so you know, Meredith has a real whimsical. Uh, she's got a real sense of humor, and there's a lot of whimsy in her work. Uh, I've had some of her. I've had some installations of her sculptures in the windows in the gallery window before. I'm hoping to. Again, real soon. Andrea Geller. Andrea, thanks for hanging in there. Hi, uh, Robert. We have another piece by Andrea. Andrea is the uh, queen of water, I believe. <laughs> um, she has a real way with water. Uh, this is this is the latest. Um, this is called Bow Lake. Um, so, yeah, please tell us about Bow Lake, Andrea. Okay. Yeah. So I have, uh, you know, been handling water. I've been studying water and 
various forms. It was actually interesting because I had the opportunity to go to the Canadian Rockies this past summer. And I have to tell you that was that it just blew me away that every day was is just every day had something so overwhelmingly visual. Uh, I took over well over 1500 photographs. Um, I was on a quick tour, so I had no time to sit and really process. So um, when I got home, I did a series. I'm I did. Well, the first one I did was of a previous lake, which was uh, Lake Pato. And then I decided to handle um, Bow Lake. And the third one, which is Lake Louise, um, will constitute that group of uh, lakes. But I don't think I'm done with them by any stretch of the imagination. They are along the Icefields Parkway in Banff National Park. And why I ultimately cho chose this one over Pato Lake was I like the perspective that I got. It felt like it was a little deeper perspective and there's a glacier at the at the end of this. And so the other thing about the Bow Lake, um, we started in Calgary and Calgary is a city along Bow Lake and the, the just the word, the, lake, uh, the re river, sorry, but it refers to the reeds that grew along its banks that were used by the First Nations. And as I understood it, I just tried to find that information, but as I understood it on the, uh, from the tour guide was that the, um, the water from Bow Lake actually goes down to the Arctic. So just it just like was so amazing to think about how long the trip, the water runs and how many stages and the fact that this was is glacial water is alone just the most amazing idea. So these blues just keep me connected to the subject. Nice. Uh, you, the blues are stunning. Um, and uh, uh, Andrea, as I was saying, is I mean, she's she's the master of water. Um, she's got uh, a series, a gorgeous series on Artsy of uh, the process of coming in and out of the bathtub, um, preparing for it, um, being in the bathtub, and then um, um, the after uh, of, of being in the tub. Um, anyway, uh, have a look at that. She also has a series of uh, works on recycled uh, maps called the Traveler Series. Um, Andrea always, and, and then a, a lot from other shows as well, and a lot of water-based ones, pools and, and whatnot. Um, are you Pisces? I am a Pisces. Okay, <laughs> right. <laughs> I actually never put all of that together, but, you know, it, it is interesting. Yep, yep. Yeah. Uh, so Andrea, thank you. Always a pleasure to have your work here. Robert, it's a great show. You did oh, a phenomenal you. job. Thank you. Thank you so much. It is. I, and it's all because of you guys. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, Jesse, are you still here? You are. I'm going to move. I'm going to go a little bit out of water. Uh, so Jesse, I'm going to bring you up next. Okay. Um, where are you? Here we go. Okay. Uh, Jesse Sanchez. This is Moses went walking. Uh, Jesse's had a number of pieces in, in some of the shows before. Uh, this is the latest. It's acrylic on wood and it's 48 by 48. Welcome back, Jesse. How are you? Oh, hold on. I think you're muted. No, hold on. You're still muted. Odd. Maybe your microphone's not working. It says that you're you're not muted. I see you talking. I'm not, I'm not hearing you. I'm sorry. Oh well. Oh, here you go. Okay, great. Hey, great. great. All right, excellent. Welcome back. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I appreciate the. You know, you're scrambling around getting it together. I really appreciate that. I'm enjoying so much about hearing people talk about their work. I'm learning oh, a lot. Thank um, you. I know thank how you. it feels. Um, but um, yeah, I, I mean, my work, like all of it, is is about the process and the journey. Uh, you start one place and you end up another. I chose this piece because the journey on this piece happened to be very long. I mean, I started with some abstract mark making and I just kept pushing and pushing and changing and feeling it out. 
Um, the final thing I did, and this is a large piece, it's 48 by 48. It's actually right, right here, if you can see it, um, see the scale. Um, I mean, you know, I made a video of it because I knew it was going to be a, a, a battle, you know, kind of like an Ahab and the whale kind of thing. And um, what I did to make it work was I tried to introduce the horizontal towards the end. You know, I live in a place where there are a lot of farms and, um, you know, a lot of them are unused. They're empty, empty lots. You know, I guess farmers are having a hard time. But um, yeah, the horizontal spaces around here started to influence me. I didn't realize until after I was done that I was painting something of the field. So, I mean, in my art statement, you know, words like mental healing, pursuit of wellness, acceptance, encouragement, uh, mystery of life, unexpected occurrences, things beyond our control, uh, purposefulness of the universe, connectedness to one another, uh, similarities we share, um, the joy I feel, the oneness of our humanity, my sense of peace, liberating commonality, and the entirety of creation. I, I think about these things, and um, I think the work uh, was my favorite just because it came the closest to encompassing all the different things that I go through when I paint. Um, there's some feeling of water at the bottom. There's some feeling of clouds, sky, darkness. And I just think it combined a lot of things that I think about. Um, yeah, so that's what they, the title came about just because it's a, you know, prophet from the Old Testament. What would happen if he took a walk? You know, what would he think about? What would he be like in this, in this space? And that's, you know, it was a journey and it was a, a favorable journey and I enjoyed doing it. And that's why I included it in your show. You and I really, I, I really appreciate you. You know, I know it's too large for the gallery and I appreciate you, you know, considering it and putting on it artsy. So thank, thank you. Absolutely. It's a really beautiful piece. I like the purple. Uh, just, you know, the little hints of purple that are in there sort of reminds me of almost like a lavender field. Yes. A whole right. Lavender. Yeah, just beautiful. Really, really nice. Thanks, Robert. Thank you so much, Jesse. Good to see you. Okay. Okay. Um, next, I'm going to bring up uh, Edward Burden. Um, Edward has a piece that I responded to right away. Uh, this is called American Train. Um, and it is, uh, you know, I've always been a Disney fan, and this sort of adds a little bit of an alternative to it. Um, but I don't think it, I think it has a, uh, yeah, let's go over here. Thank you. All right. So this is Edward Burden uh, by his American train. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. Uh, so please, yeah, tell us about, about this guy. Well, uh, it's, I, I got many, many comments. Yeah, well, you mentioned Disney. Pinocchio yeah. is actually, you know, from in the late 1800s in Italy, and, and it was used by oh, Mussolini. Yeah. And uh, I mean, it's it's. I uh, studied semiotics um, in undergrad, and um, you know the the symbolism behind objects and images that uh, translates into um, you know patterns of meaning. Uh, I'm just, uh, I, I work intuitively. I, I didn't, I've always been a photographer, but I didn't become, I didn't realize as an artist till about uh, six years ago. Uh, and I've been working towards uh, using objects in photographs instead of being a, a street photographer, which mm -hmm. I have been since I was literally like 10. Uh, so I'm, I'm really, all I do now is art. I've been, I do this every day. And uh, I grew up in the home of, uh, my grandfather was the uh, was the president of MoMA at, during periods uh, in the fifties and sixties. So the, the apartment was filled with incredible art, and so I was watching uh, you know cartoons on TV underneath a, a Seurat, you know, with a Picasso acrobat uh, next to it on the other wall. Nice. Uh, and uh, you know a couple of Brancusis. I mean, it just so I, I've had art bombarding me my whole life. My um, my sister married an art dealer and I, I got to hang out with Basquiat in his studio before he became famous. Unfortunately, I bought Herring's work instead of Basquiat's, but hey, we all make mistakes, right? I was young. Um, so this is a, this is me 
uh, transitioning from photography. I've always been an analog photographer. I used film my whole life, transparencies, photochrome, extrachrome, and black and white film. And now uh, I really love digital cameras. I have to admit, I love the immediate gratification of being able to look and play with my images as soon as I shoot them. Uh, I know it's, you know, films coming back is getting more popular. Sorry, I'm a dinosaur. I, I do have film cameras. I shoot film still. And frankly, Good. I could replicate this with film. This is essentially a multiple image that I, where I've taken uh, different images that I shoot. Like these things here are, uh, that's just a separate image that was uh, made in a very low light with um, devices. I hand, I hand light all my uh, sex. This is actually, these figures are about this tall. Um, and I'm planning on doing silk screens, you know, screen printing, uh, very influenced by Warhol. And uh, this is uh, my sort of digital representation of what my screen printing will look like. That's it. I I love it. As I said, it you know it's it's um it's been getting a lot of uh, a lot of feed. We've been getting a lot of feedback for it. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. You know, all good, but um, you know, well, uh, varied. I, I have someone, uh, a friend of mine, showed my work to another artist the other day, and they looked at it on Instagram, and they said, "Boy, he's brave." <laughs> and uh, you know, I just have nothing to lose. I yeah. I, I didn't. Uh, I've never fell for society particularly, other than making fun of it a bit. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, humor is probably the most important thing in my art besides, you know, balance, composition, lighting. I get political, sure, um, because it is art. Yeah. It's not yeah. just- it should. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so uh, much, Ron. Very cool. I like it a lot. Thank you. Thank you. Nice and thank, you. Thank, you for, thank you for hanging out. All right. Okay. All right, here we go back to uh, so we're going to backtrack a little bit, or I'm going to backtrack a little bit. We left off with Andrea Geller. Okay, Cindy Sumerano, this is called uh, Chasing Light, Chasing Joy. It is a oil on canvas, or I'm sorry, it's acrylic on canvas with hand poured, hand cut acrylic uh, sheet. There's some appliques on here as well, uh, all of the daisies. Uh, Cindy has, um, like like Edward, has a, a little bit of a, a dark sense of humor. Um, I've had a number of uh, Sydney, uh, um, Cindy's pieces um, in different shows, and I'm really pleased to have this one. Uh, the next piece is by Andrea Giaraputo. This is called uh, Snoozing Cats. It is a uh, fiber piece. It's a little piece. It's only 10 by eight. It's mixed media textile. Uh, Andrea lives here in uh, Sauvignes and her work is always so charming. Really, really like it. She does some really wonderful um, architectural pieces as well with, with uh, fabric arms. Okay. We have another fabric piece as well by, um, did I pass it up? Hold on. Here we go by uh, Denise Giardulo. Uh, this one is called Autumn Afternoon. Um, this is a little bit of a tapestry. Um, it hangs from uh, a, um, a wooden rod um, and it's all mixed media fiber. Uh, there's some really, really great um, texture that Denise has created in this piece. Okay, and we have a piece by Ingrid Nichter. This is called uh, General Precautions. Ingrid is a young artist living in, or younger than me, uh, living in Kingston. Um, and Ingrid uses a lot of uh, different mixed media. She'll use a lot of text in her work. Um, uh, it's, it's always, um, there's always a bit of an edge to Ingrid's work. Uh, it's quite a bit of her work on Artsy as well. She's been in a number of Emerge Gallery shows before. Uh, next piece um, is by uh, Carolyn Hester. Uh, this is called Flow. Uh, it's a jacle print of an acrylic painting. And Carolyn lives in um, Red Hook. Oh, Santa must be coming. I hear the fire trucks outside. <laughs> Here we go. Um, oh, I was doing so good with this. 
Hold on, now I'm back to this again. All right. Do you hear the fire trucks? Here comes Santa. Okay, uh, Andrea, Karen, okay. Uh, Sandra Nystrom, this is called Morning Reflections. Uh, Sandra lives over in, um, she lives around by Olive, I believe. Uh, this is oil on uh, linen. Beautiful piece. It's a small piece. I think it's 12 by 12. Uh, Nancy Lent, this is Prayer for the Planet. Uh, this is acrylic, Micah Flache and uh, Conti, I believe. Oh, craft paint. Sorry. Okay. You folks have been real troopers uh, hanging in there with me while I try to navigate this. Uh, Danny Marie Jones, this is called Dreamscape. Um, it is, uh, this is acrylic and this is on wood. It's not on canvas. Um, really, really beautiful piece, um, by, uh, Danny Marie. Danny works, uh, if you, you, you zoom in real, real closely, there's, I mean, there's some really, really wonderful texture on here, almost like pointillism. Okay. And then we have another piece. This is uh, Dennis DeLillo. This is called The Saint After the Satire, uh, Saltire. Um, this is India ink and acrylic on canvas. I would really love to bring this into the gallery, um, but it's a really large piece. It's 60 by 48, I believe. Um, and if you've been to the gallery, it is a small little place. So I'm a little limited to what I can bring in. Um, this is by Mary Elwin. It's called Path at Big Deep. Uh, which is in Woodstock. And this is a oil on linen piece. It's 18 by 24. And Mary um, is an artist living in the Hudson Valley. This piece, uh, congratulations, Kay. I don't know if you've, uh, if you uh, saw it or not, but this piece sold. Uh, this is a uh, oil on canvas. It's 12 by 24. It's in Scarpment and it is a uh, gorgeous landscape um, in Ireland. We heard from Jesse. Uh, this is a photograph by uh, David Garland. It is called uh, The Land Near the River and it is 34 by uh, 26, I believe. Okay, we're wrapping up. And then uh, we just heard from Edward. Uh, so I think that's everyone. Ooh, uh, that is everyone. Uh, I got through it. <laughs> the, um, I, always have, I always have a blast doing uh, these shows, um, but um, you know, this today was a challenge. Um, uh, technical difficulties um, that just threw me off from the very beginning. Um, so I thank you everyone for um for hanging in there and um you know just being so patient it's a really really good show um some it really is the best of show uh some fantastic fantastic work by some very very talented artists uh so please have a look on uh, artsy come on into the gallery um i'm open friday saturdays and sundays um and uh you know Sovereigns is turning into a bit of an arts destination so you won't even, you know you'll be able to go to my gallery and then um three other galleries just within a two block radius uh mm -hmm. thank you again everyone for uh, participating in best in show um this show runs uh through January 8th at the gallery then I'm going to take a little break for a couple weeks um uh and then come back in february with um my annual show of uh socrates artists art art by uh socrates artists mm -hmm. robert uh, is this show being recorded is, is any way to relook yeah. it get it again it's, yeah yeah it's on, the, on youtube or something uh, i i'm i'll be post if it's not already live if, if it's not already posted on youtube I'll, I'll be posting it um after you know the meeting ends awesome awesome all right, all right. thanks again uh, everyone, thank you again for, for joining me uh, and especially for being so patient. Um, and um, let's do this again in two more months. Okay. <laughs>
Thanks, uh, Robert. Happy holidays to everyone. Thank you again. Thank you. Bye.